are you on that? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I got nervous. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. And it's sad that I got nervous. <laughs> yeah, right? What, what do you mean? <laughs> this week you were talking about just the value of it and kind of like the break in the schedule before the preseason finale. Like, what do you want to most take advantage of? I, I mean, just the reps and the things that we can orchestrate and the teaching that we can continue to do. Um, you know, controlling the amount of bumping, you know, prioritizing, like, you know, when we need it most. Um, but there's just so much execution stuff that we've seen over the past three games. And then, you know, new players in new places. How do you rep out and teach guys to play together and give them opportunity to do that? In your own head at this point, do you have your rotation set? Uh, I have an idea of a rotation. You know, obviously, um, Jarrett's situation makes things, you know, a little foggy. Um, but, you know what I mean? Like, we've got a basic idea of where we're going. This reevaluation this weekend, are you still hopeful for the regular season opener? Where do you stand on that? Uh, I leave that up to the people who make the decisions and who can read x rays and <laughs> MRIs, you know, yeah. things. I mean, I can read it and I'll just make it say what I want it to. Where are you guys with Evan on uh, three point shooting? Uh, he's got license to take them all. Um, you know, it, it's not something that we want to force him and say you have to take three, four, you know, five a game. Um, but, you know, he works his tail off at it. Uh, if he's got opportunities, he's got the freedom to take it. Uh, but what we don't want to do is just throw him in this box and make him feel pressured to just do that one thing. Um, you know, he's such a dynamic player and has the capability of making shots at all levels. So, like, we want him to be comfortable and attack-minded and what the defense gives him, you know, and what he forces the defense into, just take those shots. I mean, <laughs> yes, you know, like if, if he, you know, has the ability to become, you know, a average to above average three-point shooter, I think it changes the dynamic of the way people have to guard him, the matchups they can put on him, and what it does for everybody else all over the floor. Uh, but again, I want to reiterate, like, he's good enough to make you pay wherever he is on the floor. So, again, it's not something where, you know, pressure, 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 it's be a basketball player. Uh, because he's got the skill set to make you pay. So why did he regress last year percentage-wise? I think, honestly, like, we'll take responsibility for that because it's just difficult when you don't know when your shot is coming to be a good shooter. And, you know, I mean, he you know, took less than one a game. Uh, and it's hard to be a good shooter when you don't know, you know, exactly when the shot is coming and then you only take one a game. So, you know, we'll take responsibility for that. He mentioned adding seven pounds this offseason. And one of the guys was saying, like, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's seven pounds in one offseason, then it could be seven in the next season, da, 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 da. Um, Where, if at all, have you seen, like, his added strength come into play, whether it's the preseason or training camp so far? Uh, it's been, like, in his face-up game uh, and the way that he's taken on, you know, heavier, you know, physical guys. Um, like, he's got a confidence now when he's bringing the ball up the floor and, you know, whether it be a Tristan or a Damian who's in front of him, he's confident enough to engage him and not always feel like he's got to do something to maneuver around him. So, you know, that added weight also comes with added strength. And, you know, you may know this, I don't know about your frame, but, like, when you've got that strength, right, you feel more confident in hitting people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I live. Yeah. <laughs> Last year's loss in the playoffs, can you use that as a positive somehow? Uh, I mean, you hope to learn from all those things. So that's the positive that you take out of it. Um, you know, you grow from adversity. Um, you know, you grow from, you know, things that are painful and you don't want those things to happen again. So, you know, that's the only positive that I could see from it. I mean, you, you don't replace Jared Allen um, and what he means to us with just a single individual guy. Uh, so everybody's kind of had to find their way. But Jared means so much to us. You know what I mean? And we value him so much that it's not just, hey, plug and play. Like, there's certain tweaks and things that we have to make. But guys are accepting the challenge. 
Um, but obviously, you know, Jared's a huge part of what we do, and we miss him. How much has the addition of Stephen Jones upgraded the big man? I mean, it just gives you, you know, extra size. Um, it gives you that vertical spacing. Um, you know, he's got nice touch, and he's a good passer. Uh, so, you know, again, you don't fall off, um, you know, completely, you know, because he does have a similar skill set to Jarrett. Uh, and he protects the rim and protects the paint, uh, and his teammates are gaining that trust with him. How good has he been in the preseason? Anything about him surprised you? Uh, his, his ability to pass the ball, yeah. you know, that, that surprised me. Uh, we can get him the ball on the elbows, and he can, you know, create from there in tight spaces. Uh, and that's something that I didn't know he was capable of. The other thing Evan talked about is some of his individual goals beyond the team goals. Um, and one of the things that he said was all-star this year. What needs to happen? from your perspective for Evan to reach that goal and be an all-star this year? Uh, I think people need to respect what he does uh, at a higher level. Um, you know, Evan's not always just going to be impactful because statistics say that he's impactful. But, like, if you watch Evan play, you see his impact on the game on both ends of the floor because, you know, he might not get the assist, but he creates the hockey assist that leads to the assist because he makes the right one. Sometimes people don't pay attention to that, right? Defensively, he might not lead the league in block shots, but because he's in the right spot, people don't even come in there in the first place. They don't keep a stat of that. So I do think people have to appreciate, you know, all the little things and the nuances of basketball and the game of basketball. Um, but on us, again, we've got to increase his usage. We've got to put the ball in his hands, and we've got to allow him, because he's not going to be a selfish player. We put the ball in his hands, he's going to make the right play nine times out of ten for the team. So it's our responsibility, it's his teammates' responsibility to help increase his usage. Do you do that with two ball down the guards? Uh, for sure, because what I think it does is it puts people in tougher situations to have to guard those two guys, right? If we get to just stare at you, you know, the big man just comes and sees where the ball is. Now I can just set my defense, get to whatever my coverage is. If I throw the ball to Evan, now the defender has to guard Evan. The guards are doing whatever they do. Now they can create an advantage, or he can keep it and he can make the next play. So I think him touching the ball more will make those guys' easy, job easier and more difficult to guard. Is there anything new on Ricky? Uh, no, not yet. So you'd have to keep a roster spot for him if he's here or not? As of right now, yes. All right, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. All right.